Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I'll admit that I'm uh, frustrated that this committee's uh, once again asked you to come up here and testify about the harm caused by sequestration. Uh, we in the Congress created this monster, and uh, we keep dragging you up to the Hill to have you tell us uh, how much damage that it's done. Uh, I've met recently with uh, my constituents in the great community of Colorado Springs uh, last month, and they, they made it real clear to me that they're tired of Congress's unwillingness to compromise and solve the problem, and that view is echoed everywhere I, I travel. Uh, the bottom line is that we all know that we've done serious harm uh, to critical programs and in, in our people, and it's uh, very clear that none of this is really going to save us any money. I think you all have made that case very powerfully. In fact, it's going to cost us more in the long run than if we just buckled down and put in place uh, strategic budget uh, architecture based, for example, on the Simpson-Bowles plan. Uh, you and the people you lead have been paying the price for our failure to lead uh, and to act, and, and, I, and I'm sorry for that. I apologize for that. Um, but what we've been hearing from our constituents and from you should make it clear that we need to reach a bipartisan agreement, pass a budget, and get back on track. Um, and let me, um, in that spirit, General Welsh, turn to you. And in, in your opening statement, uh, you said that if you're, you were given the flexibility to make prudent cuts over time, we could make the savings required under current law. Could you be more specific about the kind of flexibility uh, that you're asking for? I've been working with Senator Collins and, and others on uh, pushing for better budget flexibility uh, when it comes to making cuts uh, government-wide. And it's important to know how we could get this right and, and how it could be most helpful. Senator, in my view, and I think everybody in the room would agree, sequestration is a horrible business model. The mechanism of sequestration is a horrible business model. No successful business would try and downsize its product line or its cost doing it this way. Anybody would take a time period, determine what kind of savings you needed over the time period or what kind of reductions you needed over the time period, you take the beginning of that time period to actually close product lines, reinvest the capital or the manpower or the force structure saved into the successful product lines you wanted to continue, restructure your organization, and then create savings at the back end of this. Uh, if we had nothing more than a 10-year period to save whatever the number is, we understand we have to be part of the, of the solution for the nation, the financial solution for the nation. No one is resisting that. This mechanism that makes us take big chunks of money the first two years is what is putting us into this readiness versus modernization dilemma. The overall cost of sequestration reduces our capability and capacity over time, but it doesn't break us. The mechanism is what breaks us. Um, and so I, I would just say that if we had the trust available to believe that the department would return $1.3 trillion over 10 years and we could show you a plan of how to do that, eliminating this abrupt nature of the mechanism at the front end would be a much, much more sensible approach. General, that's very helpful, and I know this committee is going to listen and, uh, as we move forward. Uh, l let me turn to uh, the economies of uh, the military communities. Uh, if sequestration uh, remains in place, I was thinking about General Odierno, the situation uh, you face. Um, we're cutting down to 450,000, perhaps as low as 390,000. Uh, there, there could be real damage done to cities like, like Colorado Springs and m many around the country. Uh, the same would General Welsh would apply to the Air Force if uh, you're forced to roll back more critical space and in, in aviation missions. In, in Colorado, over the last couple of years, we've had uh, uh, some, some real challenges. We've had to battle floods and wildfires, and uh, without the incredible support from soldiers and airmen, uh, I can't imagine how much uh, worse the losses would have been if we didn't have assets like the New Aviation Brigade at Fort Carson or the, the great uh, airmen at uh, Peterson and Schriever. Uh, could uh, you comment on that and whether those studies have been done and, and uh, what additional information we might need to be smart about how these, these cuts are made? Well, what a lot of people don't understand is in many cases, Fort Carson in Colorado, Fort Hood in Texas, Fort Bragg in North Carolina, Fort Campbell in Kentucky, they are, they are probably some of the most biggest generators of revenue for the states, period. And they don't realize that as the installations go away, you're just not losing the soldiers and what they do. You're, all the businesses that are around those installations for probably a 50-mile radius are impacted by the shutdown and loss of the impact of these installations losing people. And so the impact to the local and state governments is substantial. 
Uh, we, we have studies. I don't have the numbers with me for every installation, but we have numbers for every installation. When I go visit, they always brief me. This is the first, this is the leading employer of the state, second, it's either first, second, third, but it's very close to the top of leading employer in the state. And people, many forget about this as we look at these reductions. So that's in addition to what I'm concerned about is the national security impacts that it has. General Welsh, would you care to comment? Senator, $1.3 trillion reduction to DOD over 10 years is going to leave a bruise in lots of places. And we have to understand how significant the pain is at each place before we make final decisions. But, but I think it's going to affect a lot of people in a lot of places. Um, I was just in Colorado, by the way, sir, and visiting with a bunch of the firefighters from Fort Carson, from, from uh, Colorado Springs, from the Air Force Academy in Shriver and Peterson, and walking through the actions they took in battling the fires last year and this year. Uh, I was struck by the contribution they make to the community every day, not just when catastrophes occur. Yeah. Nobody wants to reduce that contribution. We lost in just the civilian furloughs last year as a corporate body 7.8 million man hours of work. Uh, double that for the government shutdown impact on our civilian workforce. That's also 7.8 million hours of pay that doesn't go into the community in which those peoples live. And so you can start to see the effect when we have these short-term losses of income. Uh, Long-term, it would be more dramatic, obviously. Hey, thank you, uh, gentlemen. If I could uh, see my time's expired, but I want to make a couple of very quick comments. I want to thank the members of the National Guard units who came to Colorado from Kansas, Montana, Utah, and, of course, our Colorado Guard for the incredible work they've done, not only immediately after our floods, but now to help rebuild our highways. We're reopening these highways months ahead of schedule and it's a really a testament to the work ethic and the teamwork that uh, those units brought to, to our state. Uh, secondly, I want to uh, again um, thank you all for coming. I'm sorry we're here under these circumstances, but I'm, I'm pleased to see uh, Senator Inhofe here. He's uh, too tough to let a few blocked arteries keep him from uh, doing his work. And then finally, I want to associate myself with all the remarks about the Congressman and Chairman Skelton. He, he was a wonderful man. He was a mentor uh, to me. Uh, he uh, had a habit of saying, you know, I'm just an old country lawyer, but that was the moment at which I would really listen to what Ike Skelton had to say, and I know everybody who served with him felt the same way. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, for convening this important hearing, and we got to get this right. Thank you all.